So Gemini ACS trial is a phase two trial, which means that it's an early phase trial to try to understand if we can replace aspirin. Aspirin has been the foundational therapy in acute coronary syndrome for several decades now. And beyond that, it was actually added with dual antiplatelet therapy. So we've been sort of platelet focused, but we've known now for some time that the thrombin part or the thrombosis part is also dependent on the coagulation system. And so it was natural to think that we might be able to replace at least one of the two antiplatelet therapies that's in common use with a 10A inhibitor. And in this case, we picked rivaroxaban because it has some very positive data from the ATLAS-2 trial, which looked at triple therapy, so aspirin, clopidogrel, and rivaroxaban, and showed some great benefit. So we started this trial to try to understand that, and if you do that, you have to start with a small cohort to understand somewhat of the safety and efficacy, but it's limited. So we took patients who were on dual antiplatelet therapy already, so they were on aspirin plus clopidogrel or aspirin anticagulor. Those are the two most commonly used dual antiplatelet therapy strategies in the country, in the world. And then uh, after about 48 hours, but it turns out that it took on average five days, we randomized them to aspirin versus rivaroxaban. They stayed on their ADP antagonist, in this case to Caglor or clopidogrel, in both arms so that they continued that component of the therapy. We followed the patient up for about uh, 260 days uh, on therapy and there was a minimum therapy of uh, six months. The inclusion and exclusion criteria are pretty much standard for trials like this. Uh, patients with STEMI, non-STEMI, unstable angina. Um, patients um, had to have a biomarker positive in the STEMI and non-STEMI cohort. And we used enrichment criteria, minimal so, but uh, for unstable angina patients and for younger patients. So we had a little bit of enrichment, but it was a pretty broad population on the inclusion criteria. On the exclusion criteria, also standard ex uh, exclusion criteria, history of a stroke, recent GI bleeding or active bleeding. And then, of course, if you need anticoagulation, such as for atrial fibrillation, then you couldn't be in this trial. So it was standard inclusion-exclusion criteria. So we randomized uh, uh, slightly over 3,000 patients to the two groups I described. And the primary endpoint was uh, clinically significant non-bypass surgery bleeding. And we used the TIMI criteria for that. At one year, we found about similar findings of about 5% with either aspirin or rivaroxaban on top of the ADP antagonist. So really no significant difference. We didn't actually expect to see a whole lot of difference in this uh, <clears throat> endpoint, but we were reassured that really you could replace uh, rivaroxaban and not have significantly higher bleeding. Now the thing that everybody is concerned about, of course, is the ischemic endpoint, and we looked at those as well, but you have to recognize that the trial is very underpowered. It's not set up to test those things, but we looked at cardiovascular death and myelin stroke and stent thrombosis. There was, once again, really no significant difference between aspirin and rivaroxaban. What probably was most important to us, though, because this was a, a group of patients managed a lot with cardiac catheterization and PCI, was that the stent thrombosis rate was also similar. Now, <clears throat> you can't hang your hat on this, but you could at least know that you can design a larger trial based on these findings. The limitations of the study is that it's a phase two trial. Uh, basically, we have to be confirmed in a larger trial to ascertain the real benefit and risk in this, using this approach. But I think it's the first step into understanding, can we do a little bit better than aspirin? The judge, judgment on that is still out, but at least we're having a starting point.
the recommendation is that we need to sort of follow the lead now. We have slightly better targeted therapies and can we actually do a little bit better? And addressing this sort of fundamental issue is that thrombosis are led by two things, the coagulation pathway and the platelet pathway. And we focus so much on the platelet, can we now add in a little bit of anticoagulant low dose to try to improve it even further?